name is Katie. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing you some not so typical NaNoWriMo tips. I do already have videos on my channel about how to write 50k in a month, um, a lot of prep videos, and then I just came out with one last week about how to win as a full-time parent, worker, etc. Um, because I've won every NaNo that I've tried. Um, sometimes I even finish a first draft. Sometimes I finish early and can reread and revise. And so, um, yeah, I love NaNo. I go hard. <laughs> um, but I want to see if you guys, if this is your first time, if you're not an outliner, um, I hope these tips are helpful just to kind of get your brain going and thinking about your project. That way, when you are writing, if you get stuck, um, these will hopefully be some tools to help you keep going. And I do have a video on that, I think, as well, about um, how to keep going <laughs> in NaNoWriMo, which is like leaving little uh, cues for yourself, like if you're in Word or Google Docs, like a comment that's like, write description here, figure out name for town here. I love placeholders, that's what helps me get going, or like research this and just move on, like really just keep moving on. <laughs> So, if you ever get stuck, first of all, where to begin with your project, um, these aren't going to be in a particular order, but um, if this is your first book versus like other books, if you've written before, what is your brand? What is the genre you write? So for me, mine is contemporary romance, my brand is kind of like light banter, um, sweet romance, usually characters trying to figure themselves out and forge their own path and be true to who they are and figure out who their true friends and like figure out stuff with their family like that's kind of my brand and so usually I know going into a book what type of family they have what type of friends they have what their love interest is going to be like and also like the whole brand thing um my books are lighter maybe you're going darker maybe yours is horror maybe it's like whatever um, think of the tone of your book, the mood of your book, think of if it's a quiet versus loud book, and that's what more like quiet stakes versus like giant stakes, like world ending versus like the character thinking her world is ending. <laughs> this is going to really help you when you start to think of your plot and um, story structure for like what is going to be hitting your character. Is it going to be more internal versus external versus like, oh my gosh, save the world already. Um, are there murders? <laughs> are there, um, you know, friendships being destroyed? Like, what is happening in your story? What do you want to happen in your story? With that, what type of tropes do you like to use? If you're stuck and you're like, man, I really want to put this trope into the story, go ahead and slap that guy in there, at least to get the ball rolling. And you can always revise that bit later and fill in um, some more transitional stuff or move that part to later. I love moving scenes around um, if they're just not working there. I have a whole bunch of blogs on my website that talk about different tropes to use, different um, themes to use, and I think subplots as well. And so um, just a lot of different lists that y'all can go check out to um, figure out what you kind of want in your story as well and I'll try to link those down below. With story structure you may or may not use that. Maybe you're a free flower, maybe you like the three act, the four act structure. Um, I would suggest even if you're not really an outliner to get a baseline story and that's gonna be like what is your inciting incident, what breaks into the second act, what your midpoint is, what your like all is lost is, and then your climax. And um, those pieces will help you keep going. So if you're like really stuck and you're like, okay, somehow I have to get her to where she makes this choice to go to the new world, then you know that you can just think of something for that. And if you need help along the way, you can also do little prompts for yourself and make a list of those in case you do get stuck. But that's a whole other thing. That's not a where to start. <laughs> um, also think about your characters. Um, when you're thinking of what story you're trying to tell, what character is going to be your main character? Who has the most to show, to grow, etc.? What is their lie they believe and what do they need to overcome by the end? That way if you know that, 
you can just keep poking holes at them the whole way. Like if they're fine and dandy, you're like, I need to hit them with their lie again and make them, you know, go down a bit. <laughs> and then have them overcome it toward the end. If you keep all these things in your mind, it will be pretty easy, at least in my opinion, to keep your story moving forward. You can always introduce side characters. You can always bring in friends, family, whatever, to help your character along, to make them be a juxtaposition. Um, to make them be something that they overcome. And when you think about all of that stuff, that kind of turns into subplots and um, can be something that you work on as a small arc as well. And maybe that's not something you really care about until revisions, but just to keep in the back of your mind as you're writing. And then of course, you're gonna wanna set your goal for Nano. So if you're doing the traditional 50,000 words, you're gonna wanna figure out how many words you need to write on the days that you're writing. It is totally okay not to hit that goal, even though yes, it is very fun to get all the badges and hit that goal. <laughs> but sometimes you're just stuck or you decide that project is not flowing and you wanna do a new project. Uh, I know people who work on multiple projects during NaNo and just accumulate those words. I know people who revise. I know people who just do part of their novel. So really, I hope that if you keep all these things that I've mentioned in mind while you're writing, I'm hopeful that they'll keep you writing and just continue to remember what your end goal is what your arc is what your story is and what your character needs to go through the genre you write um, any tropes you want to add your special brand flavor and yeah that's kind of all i got for you um, for a not so typical nanorimo tips again i do have other videos with the more typical tips so go check those out as well but I just got thinking about um, these particular tips and how they might be helpful and how I might use them toward my Nano story as well so good luck with Preptober especially if you are outlining or if you're just thinking trying to think of a book for Nano and good luck reaching your goal in NaNoWriMo. My next video will be about my own project so I hope that y'all check that out and let me know a little bit what yours is about too. It's okay to be mysterious, but um, let me know which tip was the most helpful for you or if you have other tips you want to share in the comments down below and I will catch y'all in the next video.